Hello friends, I am roasting alive in my chair, also known as Jasu. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be playing Final Fantasy Tactics right now. Uh, this is uh, definitely my favorite game in the Final Fantasy series. Uh, I, I just prefer tactical RPGs in general uh, much more than the more traditional sort. And in fact, this was the game that introduced me to the whole uh, strategy RPG genre. I'd never played anything like this uh, when I first played Final Fantasy Tactics back in the day. Sure, there were, you know, earlier games in the genre, like uh, your... I can't think of any titles off the top of my head right now. But, you know, earlier ones that I hadn't played back then. And uh, we're actually going to let this sit here for a second because there's another cool intro video that I want to see. And uh, while it's showing that, uh, I guess I'll continue with the little intro here. So, yes, this being sort of the first uh, tactical RPG I had ever played, I was absolutely terrible at the game uh, back when I first played it. And in fact, being, you know, really a really stupid, dumb kid uh, didn't help things either. So I had a bitch of a time uh, getting through Final F Fantasy Tactics the first time through. But I, I ended up uh, really, really enjoying it uh, in the end to the point where I, you know, went and sought out more games of its type and got ended up getting really into the genre as a result. But I'm, anyways, I'm much better at the game now, uh, which means that we're not going to make this a plain old vanilla Final Fantasy Tactics run. We're going to uh, do a little challenge run here because... Uh, this game uses uh, the same like job system that you saw in previous Final Fantasy games, like five and uh, three, and I guess just those two at the time this was released. And uh, be because of you got so much freedom within the job system, you can all these different character classes you can give to your characters, and all the different skills you can mix and match between the different jobs. There's just so many different ways to play the game uh, that lends itself really, really well to the notion of restrict restricting those options for the sake of challenges. And there are tons and tons of challenges that uh, fans of this game have cooked up with over the years. You can do uh, a single class challenge. It's the classic one, probably the earliest one people did. You can do solo character, dual class, dual class, dual character, uh, AI only, no shop, Pokemon runs, all, all sorts of different challenges you can do with this game. And the challenge I'm going to be doing here is actually a four job fiesta run. Uh, this is actually a challenge uh, for a different Final Fantasy game, actually. This is, of course, the big charity run that they do for Final Fantasy V every year, where basically uh, Gilgabot picks four random jobs for you to use, and you play through Final Fantasy V, and you're only allowed to use those four jobs. You have to have one character in each job, and you can only use uh, skills from within those jobs. And I thought it might be fun to uh, take that challenge over into Final Fantasy Tactics here. Um, I've modified the rules slightly, um, in the original Four Job Fiesta challenge, you can mix and match your skills however you want within your four characters, as long as you have one character in each of your uh, randomly selected classes. But uh, here we're going to do kind of a hybrid of like a single class and a Four Job Fiesta run. So each character in my party here will be uh, one of the random jobs I've got selected here, which I'll go over in a minute. And uh, each of the, and uh, each character can only use skills from within that job is the way I'm going to be doing it. Just because, uh, I don't know, it makes things a little bit too easy when you're allowed to mix and match skills between jobs. You can make, there's a lot of really good skills in this game, and you can make some really powerful characters with just like any four random jobs to choose from. So to keep things uh, challenging and interesting, uh, um, each character is only going to be, is going to be assigned one job, and they can only use uh, skills from within that job. And the party we rolled here um, is a bit interesting. I gotta say, I, I, I used uh, just random.org to pick out some random jobs for me, and I don't think I don't think I could have gotten a more trollish party if I had like assigned the internet to pick my jobs for me. So these are the four jobs that, and yeah, we've got the story text here. I'm not really gonna be. Uh, paying too much attention to the story here. Although with that, uh, just because, you know, I've played through the game a bunch of times and I kind of know everything that goes on. And also, this is a really long game. Uh, so, to sort, sort of keep the length down, I'm going to be kind of advancing through the uh, cutscenes and dialogue very quickly. Although, uh, with that said, uh, one thing I'm going to mention 
is uh, I, for no good reason, I've decided I've to use a hacked version of the... Okay, so there's two versions of the game. You've got uh, the original PS1 Final Fantasy Tactics, and then you've got the War of the Lions version released on PSP with a new translated, newly translated script and a uh, whole bunch of new content and a bunch of other cool stuff. Uh, I'm doing the original PS1 version for reasons I'll get into later. It's just better for these kinds of challenge runs. Uh, but I've I've got a, I've got a version of the original game with the War of the Lions translation hacked into it. So if you're a speed reader, uh, yeah, it has some very lovely, colorful, well-written dialogue to glance at as we <laughs> zip through all of it speedily. Anyways, now it's the time to pick our. Oops. Uh, no, it is not okay. Uh, so now's the time to pick our main character names. And of course, you, you gotta have some kind of gimmick for naming your characters, I guess, for these kinds of runs. I'm absolutely terrible when it comes to just picking names or ba basically just anything involving just creativity or coming up with my own ideas for things in general. So we're just gonna, yeah, we're just gonna do this. And this is gonna be the theme for our characters. This run. Oh yeah, you've got to pick your birthday here too, which is actually quite significant. Actually, uh, your character's birthday has a big effect on the gameplay, and I'm not—that's not even a joke. So your character's zodiac sign has a big impact on how much damage you can do to the enemies based on their zodiac sign and their alignment in the compatibility chart. That's probably the worst thing about this game. I never pay attention to zodiac compatibility. And actually, another plus. So. I'm going to get into the various pluses of the original PS1 release over the PSP remake later. But, uh, yeah, what, one bonus that we get is we get all these lovely little uh, CG scenes that uh, got cut out from the War of the Lions version. So that's nice. I, I, it's actually been a while since I've seen this uh, opening cutscene here. I pretty much skip through this every single time I play this game. I don't even remember... Like, what happens here? I probably wouldn't have bothered sitting through that extra title scene, uh, title screen intro if I'd rem remembered that this were a thing. Oh, yeah, right. So the party we've got. Yeah. So on, the, on this uh, Four Job Fiesta Final Fantasy Tactics run, uh, we are going to be rocking Archer, Thief, Oracle and Bard. Um, so, yeah, it's, like I said, I probably couldn't have picked a more ineffectual, like, trollish party if I had, like, yeah, put it up to an internet poll. But, uh, nevertheless, this is what we've got. Uh, this will be interesting. I actually have done this challenge before, actually, because, yeah, the Four Job Fiesta is going on, like, right now as we speak, like, you know, the whole internet event. A bunch of Twitch streamers streaming Final Fantasy V right now. And uh, I, I, I actually did a full Fiesta run of this game. Not Final Fantasy V, but Final Fantasy Tactics using the uh, the job generator for the uh, Final Fantasy V for Job Fiesta. And I, I played through the game with, uh, oh, what did I have? I had a chemist, a samurai, uh, what were, oh, a Geomancer, which was really good. And what was the other one? Chemist, Samurai, Geomancer... Oh, and Mediator. Uh, which was... It ended up being a really strong party. Uh, really fun. And so it sort of uh, made for a good practice run for this LP. Kind of give me a sense for what's the best way to do this thing on video. Because there are various stipulations that tend to go on these types of challenge runs. And the Four Job Fiesta isn't really a standard like, Final Fantasy Tactics run that a lot of people do, so I can basically just make up my own stipulations as we go along here. Or I guess I could, I could I could go a little bit into the differences between this version of the game and the War of the Lions version. Overall, I'd say War of the Lions is actually the best version of the game. Like, if you, if you don't know Final Fantasy Tactics, have never played it, and are interested in picking it up, I would strongly re recommend... Uh, playing through the War of the Lions uh, PSP version of the game. There's just a bunch of new contact, uh, uh, content in the game, uh, new characters, new side quests, but really cool stuff. Uh, the script is completely retranslated. The original game had 
kind of an Englishy, poorly translated script, with which gave us a lot of kind of memorable lines that I kind of miss out of the new tra translation. I kind of miss, this is the way, and blame yourself and God, and all those good lines. Or was, but uh, but just the War of the Lions translation is just a lot, lot more colorful, a lot more. Uh, just easy to read. Makes a lot more sense, frankly, too. Like, I, I found it a lot e easier to follow the plot of the game, uh, playing through the game on the PSP version, as opposed to if the original translation. And yeah, you can see... Uh, I know that the new translation is actually a little bit controversial. Personally, I, I just think it's strictly better. I Some people don't like the kind of flowery, old Englishy language of it, but per personally, I love that kind of stuff. It really adds just a lot of, or I, I don't know, like character to the universe, or what do you call it that? Or I don't know, it makes it seem more sort of of the time. That sort of gives it that kind of, you know, medieval, medievalish flair to it that I just really like. So, uh, but yeah, but that said, I'm not really going to comment too much on the script or the plot or anything like that. If, you could, if you're a speed reader, you can probably follow that as I go through the game here. But uh, we're mainly going to be getting into just the mechanics of the gameplay and uh, def definitely the specifics of the different jobs that we've rolled. I might end up having a pretty tough time getting through the game with these jobs. Like, I do like this game a lot, but I haven't... Like, I... I haven't played this game as much as, like, a lot of the super hardcore players out there. Like, there are players out there who do, like, like single, like, like I said, like, solo character runs where you only run through the game with your main character, Ramza, or Beef, as we call him here. Uh, there are people who've done single class, uh, single character runs where you run through with, with only one character with, using only one job, which is pretty crazy. There are people who have doing, done, like, single-class runs of, like, shitty classes, like, uh, what, Bard is probably the worst one, or Mime. Or actually, I actually don't think the Mime single-class challenge has been done. That one's probably impossible, but... Anyways, I've, I've actually done a few sort of challenge runs like that before. Like I said, I did my little four-job fiesta run uh, just uh, about a month ago, I think, in preparation for this LP. Um, I've done single class runs. I went through with five lancers one time. I've done uh, uh, I've done five black mages, which was uh, certainly interesting. <laughs> uh, let's just rush in. So this is just kind of not even really a tutorial battle. Just kind of I don't know. Gets you used to the menus and stuff, and shows you some cool animations or this is uh, i guess a little bit of what they call the abilities you know like like a pun on t's and abilities you know it's a, it's a common thing in a lot of games where it's like you start they show you like a sequence early on in the game where you've got like a bunch of skills and abilities that you won't get till later in the game that's kind of what's going on here like we've got like archers and knights and holy sword skills we aren't going to get to see any of that stuff until way later in the game or in, act in fact we're not going to get to see any of that stuff at all since we aren't going to be using those classes But, uh, yeah, mainly we just run around trying to get past these guys as fast as possible to get onto the real, the real game, the real story, and all that. But, yeah, I, yeah, I probably can't really talk too much about the classes until we actually get them unlocked. I guess I'll talk a little bit, of actually, about, uh, so, that, yeah, like I said, I definitely prefer the War of the Lions version in general, just for, like, a, like a regular playthrough, going through the game your first time, War of the Lions... Fantastic. Probably want to go with that. However, uh, one of the changes they made for the uh, War of the Lions PSP version is that uh, all of the job class, all, all of the jobs require a lot more job levels to unlock. Like this isn't this isn't like uh, Final Fantasy three or five, where you can just switch freely uh, between the different jobs. Uh, basically, there, there's there's kind of like a like a job tree. That the game never actually shows to you, but you can, you know, look it up on Google. And that basically, you have to level up some jobs in order to unlock others. And the unlock requirements for the different jobs are all slightly higher in the War of the Lions version. They basically require one extra job level in every job to unlock pretty much every class, which is, uh, 
really a bit of a hassle when you're going for any kind of class restricted run. Like the first thing you do with any kind of like run, like challenge run involving class restrictions is you basically spend like a bunch of time grinding up JP on Mandalia planes because the, there's a there's a battle in the first chapter. I think it's like the third third or fourth battle in chapter one is sort of where like the sort of the designated like the real game begins here point for any sort of challenge run. General rule for most, most challenges is get your level up your job, like unlock all your jobs, get everything in order before the Dorter Trade City battle, and then go forward with that, and then the full challenge is in effect. Uh, and what that effectively means is that you spend, like I said, you spend a lot of time grinding up random battles for JP uh, at the very early parts of the game. And basically, the War of the Lions version means that you're going to have to do a lot more of that, especially if you. Uh, need to unlock like a super restrictive class like like Bard, which we've rolled here. Probably the, one of the most difficult classes to unlock in the whole game. We're gonna we're actually we're actually gonna have to level up seven different jobs in order to unlock the Bard class. So, or j just so that none of you end up running. Don't you know you guys don't run away screaming for the hills upon hearing about oh grinding. Etc. Etc. Terrible LP. So I'm I'm gonna change. Like I said, this is my own challenge. So I'm gonna change up the restrictions a little bit here. I'm actually, uh, but basically I'm just gonna kind of go through the game like normal. I'm not gonna like stipulate that I have to have all my jobs unlocked by a specific point or anything. We're basically just gonna be going through the story, uh, getting our job levels as we get them, and then ba ba basically taking our jobs as they come along. And actually, what that'll do is that'll give me a little bit of an opportunity to show off some of the different classes as well as we go through the process of leveling up the different uh, classes to get the ones that we're going for. Most of these are actually pretty short, like Archer is like a tier 2 class, you can get that after like one fight. Thief is like also super short. Oracle is actually pretty easy too. Actually, pretty much all these classes are like super easy to unlock. You can get them in like maybe two or three battles, except for Bard, which requires like all of learning all of the jobs practically. And of course, we, we don't have our blame yourself for God line here. They what what do they say it here? It's or actually, it doesn't even say it here. This is actually a scene that's. Uh, not so. Well, actually, another thing that they added in the War of the Lions version is that they've got uh, new new CG cutscenes, and they're like not like the CG like you saw in the intro to this game <laughs> uh, just before. They took those out and replaced them with, like some really lovely, really fancy, like you know, modern CG that looks a lot better. And yes, yeah, so some of these uh, sort of cutscenes based, you know, using the in-game engine character sprites and stuff. Some of those were replaced with. Uh, the CG cutscenes as well, and that's one of the scenes we just saw there, where Delita rides off on the chocobo. Uh, is one one of the things that they have animated in CG in the PSP version. <laughs> this is a lo lo uh, lovely thing that the that this uh, or actually I guess I should credit the uh, the pat yeah the hack that I am using here as well. It's uh, it's called Final Fantasy Tactics Complete. It's technically in beta. Uh, right now, although it, it's like, yeah, version 0.5, although from what I, as far as I can tell, everything seems to be fine. Uh, at least from what I've seen. I guess if there's anything wrong with it, we'll see it during the LP, I guess. But anyways, the, the text in this little sequence right here, the intro to chapter one, used to scroll like super insanely slowly. It took like literally like four or five minutes to get through that little text crawl we just saw in the original, like, unhacked version of uh, Final Fantasy Tactics PS1. But yeah, this is me and all my cadet buddies at the Academy. I, I actually think it's a really nice touch that uh, these these random nobodies that we see here, all these different generic uh, character sprites, are actually our starting party members. We actually, like, we can actually put all these people in our party right off the bat. Although with that said, we aren't actually gonna like we're gonna be using them for the first battle just because we don't really have a choice. But uh, pretty much the first thing you want any sort of experienced Final Fantasy Tactics player is gonna do, probably, is they're going to after the first battle uh, dismiss all of their characters in order to recruit new ones with uh, better stats and with custom names. 
So yeah, en enjoy these guys' company while we've got it. We won't be seeing much of them. <laughs> it's a funny story, actually. Like I said, I was like a... Oh, uh, yeah, I guess we'll... Oh, you know what? Yeah, that was, that was just a little test run I was doing to make sure that this patch and emulator and everything worked okay. I th think we're just going to replace that. Yeah, I probably won't go back to that save. So anyways, here we are. Character placement screen. So back when I first played the game, I was like a really stupid little kid, like I said, and I didn't really understand like uh, just this type of game in general. This is probably the most complicated video game I'd ever played up to that point. And so I didn't understand stuff like, you know, the cues on the interface. Like you can see L1 and R1 on the top there, which tells you to press those buttons to switch between your characters. I actually didn't realize that you could do that as a kid, so I spent like a bunch of time trying to get through this first battle using only Ramza, just because I didn't know that you had other characters. And I actually did it eventually. My first time through the game, I actually got through the first battle uh, just with solo Ramza. Or actually, some of, not all these characters are equal, actually, apart from the Brave and Faith stats. Uh, some of these guys have swords and some don't. Oh yeah, I feel like this chick's... She's got a broad sword. This guy's got a dagger. Also, there's, there's actually a difference between uh, male and female characters in this game, too, which is a bit unusual for just video games in general. I'll, I guess I'll get into a bit more of that once we actually start to recruit our for real challenge party. But for now, this is, yeah, just a little, like a, kind of kind of like an intro battle that's like a step up from the previous intro battle, whereas before you only had the one character and a bunch of, like, super overpowered guests to basically win the fight for you. Here you've actually got your own army to control, and you've got to win the fight using... I guess if you're an idiot like I was using just Ramza. And then of course after the fight, I, uh, I like I, in I investigated through like the menus and stuff, and the, like I, I opened up the character loadout screen. And it's like, oh, who are all these other people? Where were they during the last fight? And then I kind of, you know, did a little bit, bit more experimentation in the menus and stuff, and look actually looked at the tutorials, and it's like, oh. Oh, I actually have an army here, and not just me and Delita. Though with that said, this is eh, I, you, when you talk when you see people talk about Final Fantasy ta tactics online, especially people who are really experienced with the game. I see a lot of people talking about like just how super insanely easy it is. Mostly experienced character, experienced players saying that kind of stuff. Or actually, does this guy know? Okay, he just knows Rush. I think we're just gonna have him... Probably just solo this chick. Or how far can she move? Yeah, he can't get in range of anything right now, so we're just gonna have him move probably... Probably just up one space. So that he's kind of in range of both fronts. Uh, this chick, God, she can't get in. I think I, I think I misplaced my characters because I'm, pr I'm pretty sure you can usually get in range to hit this chick. Um, does she actually ever get here? I think. And of course, you, you can get like super. Uh, you, you can plan out th things out like super detailed. Like you can be checking like the movement ranges of all the enemy characters and like their skills and stats and. Zodiac signs to check out the Zodiac compatibility. He can actually... Yeah, the problem here is there's no there's no sense waiting around doing nothing and waiting for them to come to me since they'll I'll just get another turn anyways before they move again. Actually, I guess I could, should probably maybe explain a little bit of the fundamentals of the game here. Because this is actually a little bit different than kind of your standard uh, tactical RPG type game, even if you're experienced with these types of games. I hate the way it uh, changes your camera every time you go through those little dialogue exchanges. So in instead of just being like purely like turn-based, like all my guys go, then all their guys go, uh, you've got the CT system here, where uh, basically you've got the CT. It's basically this like the the uh, 
active time battle system from your standard Final Fantasy games, except instead of being in real time, it just kind of uh, freezes once it's somebody's turn to go. And yeah, pretty, this first battle is pretty easy, actually. Like I, like I said, even a dumb, even as a dumb little kid, I eventually managed to beat it with just one character, plus my guest, Delita. But, uh, anyways, okay, so yeah, you've got this CT gauge. You can see this guy's at 100, this guy's at 22. Ba basically, uh, sort of each, you, you can sort of think of, like, a, a tick as being, like, the standard unit of time in this game. And on each tick, uh, each character's CT will go up by their speed. So, like, after this guy's done moving, uh, one tick will go by and he'll be at, uh, plus six CT, except... He's got to move now, so we'll be down CT. You can actually save your CT a little bit by doing fewer actions. Uh, basically, if you if you do a move it, on your turn, you can move, you can do a move, and you can do an act, and you can do those in any order. And if you're for, if you forego one or both of them, it'll actually reset your CT to a somewhat higher number. Like, if you move and act, your CT gets reset to zero. If you only do one of them, though, your CT gets set to 20, which means your next turn will come around a little bit sooner if you choose to only move or only act. And if you if you choose to do nothing on your turn, just hit wait and do nothing, uh, your CT will get uh, reset to 40. And that can be used to your advantage, actually. Like, you, like, you see this chick right here. She went in and, and attacked me. So... Like, uh, you're, you can see you've got a hit rate when you go to hit someone. Like, I've got a 95% chance to hit her. And that hit rate goes up if you attack from the side or from behind. So you might think, okay, so just to remove that uncertainty, maybe it's better for this guy to move behind her and get that 100% chance just to make sure that I get her. But actually, the smarter thing to do here is to just uh, take the chance of the miss and just hit her right from here without moving. And so, and then I'm not gonna, and then I'm not gonna move since I only did an action without a move. You can see his CT is reset to 20. Whereas this, whereas yeah, his opponent here did a move and an act on her turn, and they kind of went at the same time. So, so her CT is at zero, and mine is at 20, which, which means that this guy is actually gonna get another turn before she does, even though she kind of hit him first. And actually, I think we're just gonna gang up on this bitch. Yeah, your, your starting characters don't really do a lot of damage. Uh, their, da their damage will actually go up or down a little bit, depending on the Zodiac compatibility, which is a stupidly complex system that I don't even want to get into. It's not, it's not even super complicated. It's, it is just kind of annoying to deal with. Like, you, you can see... Uh, or next, next time a character's turn comes around, I think I'll get into the Zodiac system. For what it's worth, I don't like. I said I don't really pay attention to it at all. 18. That's kind of a big hit, so I'd be willing to wager that that guy has uh, good compatibility with uh, beef here. So okay, so like, yeah, if you go to his status screen, you hit select, and it, it can, it'll tell you what all of these different stats mean. Oh god, all these numbers. Like, like I said, this is by far the most complicated game I'd ever played back when I first played this. And you can see you've got your zodiac sign here. I actually don't know the zodiac symbols. This guy is this guy is two squiggly lines, basically. And so this guy has good compatibility with uh, Gemini and Libra, so that means that uh, he'll do more damage to uh, characters with under that sign, and indeed they'll do more damage to him. It's reciprocal that way. Characters with good compatibility of their zodiac signs will deal more damage to each other. Characters with poor compatibility will deal less damage. And then there's the weird thing with there's the best worst compatibility sign, which is basically uh, you'll you have the best compatibility with opposite gender characters of that sign, but the worst compatibility with the same gender characters. So I think it's I think the bonuses are like uh, like an extra twenty five percent damage, like plus twenty five plus minus twenty five percent if you're at uh, good or bad compatibility, and plus fifty for worst. Oh, and actually, yeah, so squiggly lines versus... Yeah, so these guys have good compatibility. And so if you're... Since you can't take back your moves, 
like if I choose to move Ramza somewhere and see, try to hit someone and be, and be like, oh, predicted damage is really shitty. It's too late. I can't, you, like, you can't take back your moves and check out how much damage you're going to do against each of the enemies. So if, like, if it's, if it, like, really comes down to the wire, you kind of need to plan out at, in advance. It's like, okay, what are the different compatibilities? Who am I going to be able to do the most damage to? Who's going to do the most damage to me? That kind of stuff. Most of the time, you can just ignore it. But, like, when it, like, when in the really, really close battles, where, it like, really, like, the re real nail biters, where you think or you're like on the edge of victory or defeat, it can be worthwhile to uh, to scope out the Zodiac compatibility in advance. And it's all based on like this weird circle, like the, like if you align the Zodiac signs in a circle and it's based on like triangles and squares that you draw lines between the, it's a, it's a dumb system and I kind of hate it. But it's the one we've got, so. One thing you can do is you can actually, uh, like, pretty much everything you do in this game gives you experience and JP. Or, I mean, any action, I should say. Oh, wow, really? Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, plus three height. I keep forgetting. It's like you think, like, you look like from the surface of the water to here, you think, oh, that's not very high. But, yeah, the water tiles actually go a bit lower. Yeah, I can't rush them either. And like I said, I can't take back that move. So, yeah, that was just a waste. Complete waste and failure. Ooh, this guy's 22 CT, which means that he's actually still going to get to act before me. But I'm going to just wait there anyways. Or actually, I think what I actually want to do is go after this chemist here so that he doesn't heal his buddies anymore. Oh yeah, he's going to go down in two hits. Well, he's probably going to heal himself, whatever. music in this game is so good. Okay, th these guys probably have bad compatibility, because that's, like, shitty damage. That's the other thing. Dam that actually, one thing I like about this game is the damage is mostly deterministic. So, like, really, if you knew the formulas and everything, you could actually, like, just sit down and calculate how much damage your attack is going to do beforehand. Which, again, can be worthwhile sometimes if it, like, really comes down to the wire. Like, yeah, my chemist is doing more damage to this guy than the other guy with the broadsword did. These guys actually probably have good compatibility. But anyways, yeah, de definitely uh, kind of experience and JP milking is definitely a thing you can do in this game. It's actually part of the reason why I like... Uh, I, I like outfitting characters with the item ability early on in the game. Not so much because I, I, I like, yeah, you buy, yeah, you give everyone the item ability and then you buy like a shit ton of potions. Not so much because, you know, the game, not so much to keep everyone healed and healthy, although that's beneficial, but mainly just so that you always have something to do. Just like anytime somebody's got damage on them, you can just use a potion and get that 10 experience and 12 JP or whatever. And yeah, you can do dumb shit, like, he, you can even hit your own guys, actually. Even that gives you uh, JP and experience. You can even do that if you really want to. Oh yeah, another, another game mechanic that we might or might not get to see in this fight. Or, you know what, I'm not, there's no sense grinding JP on this guy. So, like, under normal circumstances, I would just have this guy heal himself. Even though it's kind of a waste of a potion, he'd only be healing like 18 hit points when a potion can heal 30. But normally I just heal him anyways just to get that uh, that sweet, sweet JP. It's mainly the JP that you're going for most of the time, not so much the experience. Levels do matter in this game, especially in the early parts of the game. A level up can make a pretty big difference. But... Uh, yeah, mostly you're going for those uh, JPs to unlock your your jobs and your skills that you want. God, this freaking guy. But yeah, you can see there's this, this uh, little countdown timer above the these uh, KO'd guys' heads. And basically, if you leave a guy unconscious long enough, he'll turn into a crystal. I think we'll probably see that in a moment unless I kill this guy. I don't think I'm going to kill him. Yeah, he's just barely hanging on there. 
So, okay, Carrick... <laughs> Carrick, seriously? Okay, Carrick left a crystal behind. And so, you can do a couple things with crystals. Uh, you can... Okay, th this time it only let me restore HP and MP, so that's one useful thing that crystals can do. Another thing that they can do is they uh, you can learn abilities from crystals, and that's actually another way that you can uh, sort of grind JP. Not exactly JP, but save yourself having to grind JP by learning abilities from crystals. And I think the way it works is you just learn all of the abilities that the enemy had. Some Like, sometimes it won't let you. Normally that pretty much just means that you already know all the abilities that the enemy had. Or they, their abilities are for jobs that you... It, it's kind of specific, actually. Basically, the enemy... You, if you grab a crystal from an enemy, uh, they will teach you all of the skills fr that they have. As long as they're skills for jobs that you have unlocked, and as long as they're skills that you haven't learned already. And actually, for that reason, uh, you can kind of manipulate your character's jobs. Oh yeah, sometimes they'll leave treasure chests behind, too. Ah, uh, this guy can just... And move ahead, just in case Ramza and whoever this other generic is can't finish him off. And actually, that's one of the challenge runs you can do. Actually, is uh, no spending JP, where you have to you have to or actually you're the like a, a pure crystal or I think they call it the crystal challenge, where basically it's uh, no shopping I think and no spending JP. You have to get all of your items and abilities from dead enemies. I've never done a challenge like that. I think it would be super tedious, but even in a, in a regular run, uh, by sort of dawdling around and killing time until until all of the enemies decompose, uh, you can get a lot, of, a lot of free items and a lot of free skills that way, to the point where it's actually more efficient sometimes to just let a battle drag out until the crystals spawn, uh, rather than just spending your time uh, grinding JP. And some some foreknowledge helps in that regard. Like as, if you as if you make sure that you have all the right jobs unlocked for the right battles with the right enemies, uh, you can basically ensure that all of your crystals won't go to waste. So yeah, that's kind of kind of spent a lot more time on those first couple battles than I was hoping to. And yeah, well, I think we'll just have like a longer than average first video to introduce the challenge. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to dismiss all of these guys with their stupid names. And yeah, get... Uh, and also with their stupid stats as well. Basi basically, the only thing that changes... Basically, you've got those brave and, brave and faith... Bravery and faith stats down at the bottom. That uh, do have various effects on gameplay. In general, faith is better for spellcasters. Bravery is better for uh, the physical classes. I wonder. I actually can't tell. I don't remember if these uh, are not these. No, never mind. It was yeah. I was thinking of something else. Never mind. But uh, yeah, those. Or actually, I'm pretty sure this is actually a nice convenience thing. Could be wrong about this, but I do believe. Yeah, it, uh, it automatically strips the equipment of characters you dismiss as well, which is uh, pretty convenient. If anyone was, was freaking out about how I didn't get the equipment from the guys I was dismissing, you don't have to. So, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the Outfitter. We're going to sell all of the daggers and crap that we got from our generics we just dismissed, because our new ge our new generic units will come will come equipped with all their own stuff anyways. Oh yeah, it's all, you also start with a bunch of items that you actually can't use anyways. Like, all of this stuff requires... Like, uh, basically, the Chemist class lets you uh, spend JP to unlock the ability to use all of these items. So, like, like you, you have to, like, grind 700 JP to use Holy Water and stuff. And you aren't even going to get anyone... What does Holy Water even do? Yeah, Undead Vampire, you're not even going to see those... Uh, those status ailments until way, way later in the game. It's better just to just sell your starting holy water for a thousand. Remedy, 175. Sell it. This other stuff's not even worth the effort to sell. Ooh, high ether for 300. X potion for 350. Hell yeah. Uh, high potion might actually come in handy. You never know. And yeah, that's that. So now we've got a bunch of money to 
hire our new dudes from the Warriors Guild. This is also kind of a stupid thing that I don't really like, but, uh, okay, so anyways, so yeah, like I said, there's a difference between male and female characters in this game. First off, uh, you can pay the females less, which is good, they only cost 1400 but, uh, yeah, if you look here, basically the only difference is that, uh, females ha have better, actually, no, I think that they have different growth as well. Basically, basically females make, make better mages, they have better MP and magic attack growth, uh, Magic attack is uh, basically this. This is your physical attack and magic attack right there, represent, re represented by the sword and the rod there. So yeah, basically, fit, ladies have better rods, males have better swords, and I think uh, ladies also have better MP and males have better HP. So basically, the male characters are more better suited for the physical jobs. Those that are like, if you look at the job tree, there's kind of two trees. You've got the Squire branch, which is all your physical classes that branch off from the Squire, and then you've got the Mage jobs that all branch off from the Chemist. And the Squire and the Chemist are your two starting jobs. It doesn't cost any anything to unlock those. So, for Archer, I've, I've decided we're actually going to make uh, Beef here, our main character, the Archer. Just because all of our other classes suck so badly, and Archer is frankly probably the most survivable. So, uh, because Archer, Archer's going to equip shields, so like in the early game, we can give him a shield and crossbow, which will be good. So, Beef is going to be our Archer. Um, our Bard has to be a male. Uh, yeah, male care. Uh, basically, there's two classes that are gender specific. You've got the Bard and the Dancer. We've rolled Bard here, so we're going to need a Bard. So, we've got our Bravery and Faith. Uh, basically, yeah, Bravery affects like attack based abilities. Faith uh, affects magic-based abilities. Low faith can actually be beneficial, uh, just because uh, the less faith you have, the less the less magic damage you deal, but the less you take as well. But anyways, for a bard, I actually don't know what. I'm, oops. Oh no, I didn't actually want this guy. Yeah, no. But yeah, basically, your starting brave and bravery and faith is randomized. So in general, you kind of want to keep rolling for random generics until you get the ones you want. Um, and I think it maxes out at like 70 is the highest you can get. So this is actually really good. 68 Brave, uh, 67 Faith. That's uh, pretty good starting stats. I I've never actually used a Bard before. Like I said, they take so long to unlock, I just never bother. But uh, anyways, so okay, this is going to be Beef's bro, I guess. And indeed, he's going to be the only bro for Beef, since I think we're going to be using female characters for the other classes. And, I don't know, what goes with Beef? Or, I guess a Bard. I think Sirloin would be a good name for a Bard. It has, I don't know, kind of, like, you know, Sirloin. It's got kind of that, I don't know, classy feel. Oops, no. Not Sir Lodge. I guess we could keep it with Sir Lodge. Makes just about as much sense for a fantasy name. Okay. So we've got Sirloin the Bard. And now for the female uh, classes. So yeah, the females are better at magic, and we've rolled Oracle, which is a magic-based class. So we're going to want... Oh, uh, that's... Actually, no, that's bad. We want in the high 60s. Whoops. Oh, no, I didn't want to do that. So yeah, this is going to be a little bit boring here, where I basically just uh, keep rolling generics until I get the stats I want. Ooh, 70 faith. Low brave... Like, bravery is... Like, you can sometimes want low faith on a character. Like I said, because of the reduced magic damage. Uh, bravery, on the other hand, is almost always good. You always want high bravery. On the other hand, that is... Although... Eh, oracles actually have decent physical attack and strength, too, though. So I think we... Yeah, we want a good balance. We want high brave and high faith. So, unfortunately, uh, that's... Decent, but I think we can do better. If, if, if I see... If I see something s similar to that... I'll take it, but... We'll see if we can't do better. God, I'm just striking out here. This video is gonna go, like, even longer. Longer than I expected. Oh, for a second I thought that was 67-67, which would be amazing, but... 
Oh, I'm tempted. If that, if that were reversed, I would take it. But we, yeah, Oracle is primarily a magic class. They, they deal status ailments, basically, is what they do. And I believe the chance to inflict their status magic is based on faith. So we definitely want, like, crazy high faith for our... Or, or is it Oracle? I think in the War of the Lions translation, it's something else. Mystic. That's what, that's what they call it now. Okay, this isn't going well. Probably could have done this off camera, but... Ooh... Fifty-eight's pretty bad. I mean, it's not horrible. It's slightly worse than average. I think the values generally range from, like, 45-ish to 70-ish, I think. That is amazing faith, though. I'm gonna keep going. This is why I'm terrible at push-your-luck games. Nope. Even worse. Ooh, hello. <laughs> I'm super tempted to go for, again, it would be better if it were reversed, but yeah, 67 and 68 is nothing to sneeze at. We're going to take that. And Oracle... Uh, I, think I, like, I think I like Brisket for an Oracle. Yeah, Brisket the Oracle. I don't know, I don't know, it's... I don't know, is Brisket a girl's name, do you think? Yeah, I, th I think it's I think it's kind of cute sounding. Oracles are pretty cute. So yeah, Brisket. Brisket is good. Almost sounds like the name for a dog, actually. I don't know. It's too late now. Or I guess it wasn't too late. I could have said no there, but yeah, we're gonna... Okay, so we've got Beef the Archer, who's our main man. We've got uh, Brisket the Oracle, and what was the other? Sirloin the Bard. Now, Thief... This is where I struggle a bit with the decision making because we don't have like any any physical damage classes whatsoever. Oracle is primarily a caster, like or it's actually one of the better like physical da for physical damage. It's actually one of the better magic classes, but uh, yeah, not exactly a physical powerhouse. Archer isn't so great either. It's a ranged attacker, low damage, not the greatest. Bard is just terrible as far as physical attack, and, and frankly, so is Thief. But, uh, it's kind of the best we've got in terms of, like, you know, raw physical strength. Which means male would be better for that. On the other hand, I don't think thieves make good physical fighters in general. Actually, the strongest ability in the thief class, in my opinion, is Steel Heart. Uh, which basically lets you, uh, temporarily attract an enemy character to your side. It's based on genders, actually. You can't... Like, if you've got a male thief, he'll only be able to charm uh, female enemies. And most of the most dangerous enemies in the game are males. So if you're, if you're going primarily like a charm-based thief, uh, female is better for that. And actually, I think the, char the odds of success on charm uh, are based on the magic attack as well. Which means females are better, have better odds of getting it to trigger too. So the question is, do I want to go like whole hog? Like, Thief is going to be my frontline fighter? Or do I want to, like, do the smart, like, play, like, a normal smart Thief and go the Steel Heart route? Under normal circumstances, like I said, female Steel Heart is the way to go. But since we don't have any physical fighters, we might be forced to go with... Although, frankly, yeah, actually, Thieves can't equip shields, so... Yeah, the, the, I think I think I've... Yeah, I'm... Pretty sure that like a physical thief would just be worthless, so we're gonna Yeah, we're gonna go with the female thief. I was actually kind of leaning the other way at the outset, which means I might have to come up with a new name for our female thief here. Because I yeah, I guess I did come up with these names in advance, since, like I said, I can't really, like, you know, zero creativity or ability to come up with stuff on my own. God damn it. And again, I think that I want faith, uh, faith for my feet thief. Or maybe it's bravery. I don't know. I'll just go for both. If I can get above, like, 66 on both, I'll take it. Ah. 
But uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I think I'm just going to go with the original plan for the thief name. God damn it. This is like the worst luck for th uh, the Brave Faith rolls I think I've ever seen. It normally doesn't take nearly this long. I'm almost tempted to take that. But no, that's terrible. Because, yeah, I, I think that Brave is the more important stat for thieves. Fucking hell. Ooh, I... Oh. No, we need better faith. I think that Steelheart might scale with faith or MA or something. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Okay. Gertrude. Yeah, our, our thief isn't going to be Gertrude. She is going to be... Actually, do I even have symbols to work with here? Oh no, I don't have I don't have a hyphen. Oh, this is a disaster. Everything is ruined. Uh I'm not gonna be able to come up with anything on the spot though. So we're just gonna go with the original plan, which was T Bone. T Bone the female thief, apparently. <laughs> okay, so there's the party. Actually, do we have any new equipment at this point? I don't think we do. Oh, that's right, yeah. Females start with uh, shitty starting weapons, too. Or, you know what, I think I have de uh, some of the broadswords that were left by the people I dismissed. Yeah, we're gonna... Yeah, they're gonna... Okay, so right now they're squires, and over the course of the game we're going to be leveling them up through the different classes but yeah our, f our starting party or i guess our final party the party we're going we're gonna to be using is uh yeah beef the archer uh sirloin the bard brisket the oracle and t-bone the thief and yeah that's uh that's what you have to look forward to <laughs> in the yeah <laughs> no doubt to be lengthy lp to come and uh, that's where we're going we're gonna to leave it for now. Uh, as ever, uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you'll look forward to the next episode. And uh, till then, see ya!